Welcome to How to Castle Doctrine. This video is intended to be a brief tutorial on how the different blocks that you can build your house defense with work. I've built a little house that shows you everything that doesn't involve electronics. And now let's walk around it. The first most important building blocks are walls. As you can see, I've laid down wood, steel, and concrete walls here. That's what they look like. They cost money. Walls. You can't walk through them. I'm trying to walk through this one. And they block line of sight. So as you move around, things that are behind walls are hard to see. The shroud's moving really slowly right now for some reason. But that's just how this works. So you see I've put down walls here. The top one is one thick. The bottom one is two thick. This is to illustrate something very important. Uh, the bottom wall that is too thick, if you look uh, here, you cannot see anything. That's because the wall is more than one wood wall thick. Compare that to up here, where if you look very closely right there, you can see the far side of this wood wall. This is an important technique to tell if walls are one layer thick or not. There is a downside to it, though, because all it's telling you is if the wood wall is one layer thick. For example, this bit down here, you can see it looks like it's one layer thick here, one layer thick here, and one layer thick here. This is, of course, misleading, because there's an empty space where it is one layer thick. There's a cement wall, there's a metal wall, all three of which look identical when you're trying to look through a wood wall. Cement and metal behave the same way, so you can be tricked if you're using tools and just trying to cut through a thin looking portion of the wall. Now, that's walls. They block line of sight, they block line of walking, and you can break them with tools. I'll cover tools later if need be. The next feature here is doors. You can see I've got three doors down here, and they are all going to illustrate a point. This first door, you can't see through any doors, but when you walk through them, they open, like so. Now you can see there was a space behind this door, so let's go and look a little bit more. If you look really carefully at this next door, you can see that the wood wall outline extends past it, so you can actually tell that there is a wooden wall behind it. So there's not actually any need to open this door, but let's illustrate that. See? Wood wall. Now, this third door, you can see again there's no wood wall behind it, but you can get no further information other than that from a door. You can't see stuff that's behind it because it's a door. This is I'm highlighting this because in previous versions of the game you actually could get information by looking carefully into the shroud through the door, but that's not the case anymore. So just don't even try to know what's behind a door. You can open doors with bricks. You can throw them at them. This is good because otherwise dogs run the risk of eating you when you open doors. More on that in just a moment. So that's doors. You can walk through them and then they're open until you leave the house and they block line of sight until then. So now I've opened this door and you can see that we've got a glass window down here, like real windows. You can see through them and you cannot walk through them and you can break them with all sorts of things. Clubs, bricks, probably guns, probably crowbars. And below this is a cat. Cats are one of the three types of pets. They will run away from you every time you take a step. So you see I moved and the cat moved down one. I take another step and the cat keeps running away from me. It is now as far away from me as possible, so it cannot move anymore. If it could go left or right to get further away from me, it would. Let's keep moving on. This is a pit bull. It is a key piece of castle defense to understand. They will try and move towards you. When they reach you, they will kill you. This one cannot reach me because the glass is in the way. But because these pets have seen me now, they will continue to follow me even if they cannot see me. See, this chihuahua knows exactly where I am. I can't trick it. It will always move to be as close to me as possible. Chihuahuas will move right up into the square you're in if you let them. They will not kill you. They'll simply yap around your feet like in real life. The turn the pet sees you, when you take the step into their sight, they do not move. So I open this door and there's a chihuahua right behind it. It did not move. I move, it moves. It will continue doing that forever. I'm just going to walk over this. Um, this is a panic button. 
The only purpose it's here for right now is pets won't walk over it. So I'm just using it to get rid of this chihuahua out from yapping around my feet to illustrate this next point. So this chihuahua that saw me back there at the previous window is still following me. Now I'm going to open a door and the chihuahua knows I'm there, so it's going to behave differently than the previous chihuahua. See, I open the door and it's not, it's not there. If you look really carefully, it's already moved under my feet. If that was a pit bull, I would have opened a door and it would have killed me immediately. If a pet has seen you, especially if a pit bull has seen you, any door you open, if it's on the other side, it will kill you. You don't get warning, you don't get to see it again. So this is almost all the pieces of building a house in Castle Doctrine that do not involve electronics. There's just uh, two remaining pieces. There's a pit trap. If you step in it, you will die. It's pretty obvious. Most people don't step in them. You can disguise them a little bit. You see, this one's harder to see. It's, uh, it's in a corner, so there's some. it's uh, partially blocked by wood wall. If you hide them, someone might fall into them, or they might just misclick and step into them. You know, that's a thing you can try and do. They're basically uh, really expensive to bypass. You need a ladder. Ladders are $1,800. So that's good, I guess. All right. Last piece of hardware in the game that doesn't require electricity somehow. So up here we've got the wife and the kids and the safe. You should know about those. And this is the shotgun. The wife will walk now that she's seen me dressed as a burglar, she will behave as if I am a burglar. She will walk the shortest path towards the door. So you got to put the shotgun in that path. If you put it down somewhere else, she will not detour to pick up the shotgun. And you can see she left the little trigger lock there that's got some strange behaviors. I think pets won't walk over it. I'll try and go into that in more detail some other time. Basically, with this shotgun, if she is right beside you, up, down, left, right, orthogonal, she will shoot and kill you. Diagonal is okay, but the wife with the shotgun will not go out of her way to reach you. She will still take the close, straightest path to the door possible. So you see, I'm not dying here because I'm diagonal to her. And if you step immediately beside her, you will die. Like this. Bang. Shotgun. Shot. Dead. My chihuahua was okay, though. All right, let's move on to the electronics portion of this demonstration. All right, so welcome back. I seem to have recovered from being dead. Let's look at some electronics now. Laid out on the floor in front of you, us, this video, you'll see most of the basic pieces. This is a power source, costs $80. It provides electricity to anything connected to it by anything that conducts electricity. So, to conduct electricity, you've got wires. These wires will take electricity from any of the four directions and spit it out all four sides. These wires only connect up and down. These wires only connect left and right. And this is a wired wooden wall. It is a combination of a wood wall and a four-way connector. So it conducts in all four directions and is a wall. It can be broken with a saw. Wires can be cut with wire cutters. Some other basic pieces for this initial demonstration are the indicator light conducting. This one's currently off because it's not powered. The indicator light non-conducting. It's also not powered, so it's off. A wire bridge which connects up and down, and it connects left and right, but it does not connect up and down with left and right. There is four buttons you can place. There's the pressure toggle switch, pressure toggle switch starting in the on position, the sticking pressure switch, which when pressed cannot be unpressed, and there's the rotary toggle switch, which acts like a up-down or a left-right wire, depending on how many times you stomp on it. All these buttons can be pressed by animals walking over them also. All right, so what does a basic circuit look like? Down here you have a power source, a wire, and a indicator light conducting, which is powered, and so it is lit up. The power flows from the power source through the wire to wherever it can reach. With that in mind, let's look at this slightly more complicated example I've built here. We have one power source. It can power all of this. Right now, it is only powering these two. That is because this is an uninterrupted wire going to the lights. This first light is on because it is a conducting light. 
Well, it's just on because it's being powered by the power source. The second light is on because it is connected to the orange light, which conducts power in all directions also. So the easiest example here after this is the toggle switch. You turn it on, power goes through it, and it powers the things above it. You turn it off, power stops going through it. That's easy enough. So let's look at the sticking switch next. You turn it on. In this case, you can see only the first light goes on because these are non-conducting lights, so power does not flow out of them. So that is this, this light will not go on. Also, because this is a sticking pressure switch, it cannot be turned off. This rotary toggle switch is not the most exciting example. Right now it is taking any power from up and down, which it's not getting, and conducting it that way. When I step on it, it goes left and right. Again, you can see the non-conducting light turned on, but the conducting light is not being given power, so it did not turn on. That is how toggle switches work, and how power conducts through things that aren't wires. Let's look at your trap options. Your basic things to try and kill, maim, or trap people with are your electric floors, powered doors, and powered trap doors. These are all toggle buttons. It should be fairly apparent what's going to happen when I step on them. I turn this on. The powered floors become powered. When they're orange, they are lethal. Anything that walks over them, the options for that are you, a cat, a pitbull, or a chihuahua, will die. You can pour water on them when they're on, or use wire cutters on them when they're off to break them. As you can see, both these electric floors are turn on with power. They clearly conduct electricity. You can have an unlimited number of them connected to one power source at one point, and they will all be powered. That being said, if you break the connection, the ones downstream of that will turn off. This next one is a powered door. When you power it, it closes. It's like a door. You can walk through it when it's not powered. And when it's powered, it's a locked door, so you cannot walk through it. You can use a crowbar to break it when it is closed. You can use a doorstop to break it when it is open. If you cut the power to it, it turns off and opens. You can also break power sources by pouring water on them. When you break a power source, it stops giving out power. This can be a problem if you are facing a powered trap door. Right now, it is a pit trap. When you power it, it is safe to walk over. If you walk over it when it is not powered, you will die. So, if you're dealing with a circuit that has a powered trap door, you probably don't want to break the power source. That is one of the great reasons why you should use powered trap doors. The reason you shouldn't is they're damnably expensive. Alright, some more advanced circuitry pieces. Hey, this looks complicated, you're thinking. Alright, so I've introduced two new pieces here. The voltage triggered switch and the voltage inverted switch. They do similar but opposite things. So let's start by looking at it. It clearly has a points for a connection left and right and a thingy above it. Uh, you can see on the right hand one the green connection left and right is solid and the orange light is on. That is because the power is flowing through this one but not that one. Why is this? Well, the way these work is if you provide power to the top, the voltage triggered switch goes from being non-conducting to being conducting. So here you see I've got a power source, power is trying to flow left and right, power is coming up. So both these buttons, when I press them, will provide power to the tops of these to demonstrate them. So I powered this button, which powers the top of the voltage triggered switch, which does a little animation. You can see the little piston goes down and completes the circuit, and then the light goes on. So that is the voltage triggered switch. If you power the top, power can flow left and right. The voltage inverted switch is the inverse of that. If you power the top of it, it pushes the piston even further down, breaks the connection left and right, and the light goes off. So those are switches. With them, you can make combination locks and all sorts of neat stuff. But that is not what I'm going to show you right now. The last piece of this basic tutorial on how stuff works in the house is the panic button, which I showed you a little bit of earlier as a method of blocking pets from following you. So the family will, they've seen me, they will begin to run away. This time I haven't given anyone a shotgun, so I'm not going to die. So you see the wife stepped on the panic button up here, and the light went on. 
and they don't detour to press panic buttons, so you have to put panic buttons in the immediate path your family wants to take. It is the almost the only thing you can put in the way of a family. You can put a shotgun down in their way, you can put a panic button down in their way, and you can put pets in their way. Nothing else is allowed between your family and a path to the front door. So as you can see, it's a panic button. It's been pressed. It's orange, so you can see it's a sticking thing. So I can't unpress this. There is, there's no way to unpress this. Similarly, I can't press this panic button. It's a thing that I can't interact with, pets can't interact with. Only your family gets to press these. So there's some applications for them, but it's usually a little bit tricky and also tends to make people want to kill your family. So think about that. Anyway, I'll try and pull together a quick introduction to how to make a combination lock as a electronics example. Thank you for watching this, and please let me know if you have any questions. Good night.